Welcome to another show, I'm Tired, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create borders like this using the UI shader code asset, which is something I haven't really touched on much before, uh, or ever, really. So it'll be interesting. You can make borders like this, which animate, you can change the width and change the shape and all kinds of stuff. We've added a background behind here. I love the color cycles patch, so I've gone with that one. But once you get the hang of it, you can experiment and do all kinds of cool stuff, I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump straight into it. First things first, we've got to set up the scene. So I'm going to right click in here and add a rectangle that will appear nested inside of this canvas. Then I'm going to fill the height and fill the width so it covers the entire display and add a material. I'll rename the rectangle to border and I'll rename the material to border mat so that we can tell the difference but still know that they're connected. Next up, we're going to go to our camera and under texture extraction here, we're going to hit this plus button and we're going to add a camera texture, which will also appear down here in our assets panel. I'm also going to go into the library and select from patch assets, type in cycle. You can do this with any patch uh, and I'm going to add the color cycle. So import whatever you're going to use into your scene. Once we have that, we can select our border material again and we're going to change the shader type here from standard to shader asset. And you'll see we have this drop down menu now. You can change it to the color cycle patch we imported, which will just make the entire display color cycle uh, random colors or you can choose create patch asset which will allow you to design your own patch asset from scratch but what we're going to select here is the create ui shader code asset which will add this shader down here css style ui view shader code which is preset and what we can do now is select our material again and you'll see we have a whole bunch of options here to play with the first thing i'm going to do is add our camera texture now you can do this in this drop down menu and just add it manually here uh, but i think it's easier to see if we create a patch for it, drag our camera texture in here, and then connect from this RGBA output to the background texture input of our border material. So you can do it either way, but I think this is more visual uh, and easier to refer back to later. Now it's time to create our border. So if we go back to our material here, you'll see we have an option for border width, which is currently set at zero. Now, if you're familiar with CSS for web design, it's pretty much identical. So if I increase this from zero to 10, then it will create a 10 pixel border all the way around the outside of our image. And you can change the color of this border by selecting here and just adjusting it with the color picker. So we can create a nice blue border if we want and we can increase the size to 25 or drop it down to 0.5. You'll barely be able to see it if you go too low. So I suggest somewhere in the range of five to 10 as a minimum, uh, but you can take this as high as you want. We can go all the way up to 100. You can barely see our guy underneath, but he's still there. So we'll leave it at 10 for now, but feel free to play around with that number. Next up, we have the border radius here and this represents the four corners of our border. So we have the X, Y, Z, and W coordinates. So if I was to, for example, increase this one to 25, then you'll see there's a very slight corner in the top left. And we can do that for all four of them. Uh, and we can create this nice rounded edge around our border. And we can increase these values here to round these corners even more. So if I was to go all the way up to 100 on this one, then you'll see immediately, I can select the top left and the bottom right and create this kind of nice shape here, which I think is pretty interesting. It's kind of a unique way to play around with borders. Uh, we can make it 100 all the way around and it gives it this nice rounded edge and if we wanted we could go all the way up to a thousand and it would make it basically round <laughs> again pretty cool kind of sweet you can play around with the shapes you can play around with all of this manually in here but as you can see we actually can create uh, patches out of these so if for example we created a border width patch then we could add an animation to this so let's add a loop animation here and from this progress output we can add a transition here uh, and by default it's set a vector three but we only want it to be one so we're going to change that to a number here and if we connect it up to our border width then you'll see it's now cycling through a width of our border. It starts at zero, goes all the way to one. So if we set it to begin at 10, for example, and have it go all the way up to 25, then you'll see that it now increases the width of that border over the duration of one second. We can adjust that duration to 7.5 seconds. Now it got a little bit slower. Uh, I'll maybe make it 3.75 and you'll be able to see it better. Um, we can mirror it so it goes in and then goes back out again rather than just jumping through and starting from scratch. So yeah, this is one way of playing around with these borders. We can also adjust the color. So if we take our color cycles patch that we've already added in here and add a patch for our border color, then we can connect that up and you'll see it's now cycling through those colors. We can also change the duration of this. So if I set it to be five seconds, then it will slowly go through those colors as it's increasing the width through our loop animation. So we have two effects going on here with the same border. We can also add the border radius as a patch. So if we do that, you'll see it goes back to default zero, 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 zero on the coordinates, but it's still looping through that animation to increase the border width and it's cycling through our colors. So now we have this in here, you'll see it's four coordinates, which is a vector four. So what we can do is move 
this out of the way a little bit and drag from our progress again to create a second transition. This time we're going to change it from a vector 3 to a vector 4 to cover all four of the coordinates here, X, Y, Z, and W. And now if we connect that up, then you'll see it doesn't immediately have an effect, but that's because we need to adjust these settings. So we had a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, and a thousand to create that nice round one here. But if we start at say 100, uh, and we'll copy and paste that so I don't have to type it. And uh, we can start with this rough shape here and we can end at 1000. So if I copy and paste those as well, then you'll see now what we're doing is cycling through uh, a loop that takes us from 100 all the way to 1000. And right now, can, because it's connected to the same loop animation, it's running at 3.75 seconds. But if we wanted, we could add a second separate loop animation and disconnect that here and connect it up to our new one. And we can make that maybe five seconds. So now you'll be able to see all three of these happening at the same time. We have our color change, our border width increasing, going through that loop animation here. And then we have another loop animation connected to a vector four transition, which is affecting our border radius. Uh, and you can change these settings. So you can start at 250 here, and you can start at 250 here. You can bring it down to 500, for example, and it will change the shape. The loop animation itself is kind of strange. You see it's a bit jarring. It does jump. We can mirror that and it will now bounce back. But whatever the duration that you set for this one is how long it will stay in its position before bouncing to the other position. It's pretty cool, it's pretty sweet. If we switch over to the FaceTime camera now, then you'll see that I'm in bed because I'm lazy. Uh, and also that we now have a kind of just a frame sitting over the top of me. It doesn't, it doesn't really look that interesting now. It kind of worked better when it was set against the white background and we had our template guy. So what I'm going to do to finish this up and make it look a bit cooler is just add a background. So if we come in here to our canvas, then we can right click and add a second rectangle. I'm going to rename that background and then we can fill the width and fill the height. You'll see that it's now sat on top. So if I drag that above the border that we've already created, it's now sitting behind. We can add a material for it, create a new material, and we can rename that background matte, and we can change the shader type from standard to flat, and just change the color to anything we want. You can add an image at this point, you can add an animation in the background. If you don't want it to animate the actual border itself, then you could have it be completely still. So we can delete this patch if we don't want it, get rid of that, and make those settings all determined by the numbers that we input in the shader properties menu. And now this is completely still, so you have all of this free space around here. If you wanted, you could add an animation back here, something moving around the edges, but you'll notice that now I can move my hand and it doesn't go outside of the frame that we've created. So what I'm gonna do is come back to our background map, create a patch for the texture here, and connect it up to a second color cycles patch. So I'll drag that in and I'll connect it up and you'll notice that it's flashing like crazy. So I'm gonna slow that down to 7.5 seconds, which is half of an Instagram story. I'm gonna set it to be a random start and I'm also gonna have it reverse itself. So it doesn't start from scratch once it reaches the end of its loop, it just goes back on itself. So now you can see we have a pretty sweet effect here. Uh, I don't really like the way the borders are changing shape, so I'll get rid of that. And we can go back in the border mat. We can make some adjustments. We'll make this maybe 15, a little bit thicker. We can change the shape of our border once again, manually in the shader properties menu by adjusting these values here. So we have our X value, which is the top left. If we change that from 1000 here, to maybe 50, then you'll see it pulls it all the way back up. Um, if we wanna do the bottom right, then it's the X, Y, Z coordinate. So 50 here will bring this right side corner down. And yeah, if you don't want the border to randomly change color, then you can delete that and go back to setting it manually. You can have it just be a normal black border or a white border, anything you like really. It's a pretty simple technique, but you can play around with this and there's a lot to experiment with, especially in terms of the shapes you can make and some of the things you can do with the backgrounds. So one last thing I'm gonna show you is with the border, you can actually scale it down. So we can change the width here to be 50% and we can change the height to be 50%. And now the frame and my camera texture is all just fit in this top corner. So if I was to duplicate this by right clicking and hitting duplicate or using the shortcut command D, then I can rename this to be border one or sorry, border two. Uh, we leave the same materials and everything. And then I can just realign it by using these buttons up here and I can push it over to the right. And now if I wanted, I could make a second material for that. We could rename it border 
to matte and we can change the shader type to UI shader code asset, same as we did before. Add our camera texture, either using the drop down menu or by adding it as a patch and then connecting it up to the same RGBA output of our camera texture. And now we can create a completely separate shape for this border. So if we wanted, we could have it be 20 uh, and leave it just like that if we wanted. And you can do the same thing for the bottom left and the bottom right. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back in a second. And there you go. So you can see now I have four different frames here using the same technique. So what I've done is duplicate this border. I now have four of them. I've created separate materials for each one. They all have the same properties as this original border material. So the shader asset with the UI shader code asset. And you'll see here, we have the drop down menu, which is expanding as we create more materials with this asset code. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, we have four frames here of different shapes and sizes that we've adjusted in the properties tab here on the right. I have a color cycles patch connected to our background material so that it's uniformly changing color behind the frames. And I've even added a loop animation to this frame in the top right. You can see it zooming in and out just to show you that there's even more interaction opportunity that you can uh, experiment with if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit like subscribe share it wherever you think people might be interested and leave a comment let me know what you thought of this video what you want to see next time or just generally how your day is going because i do respond to all the comments and i like the engagement on my posts it's fun to reply to people with all that being said i'm going to end this video now so i'll catch you in the next one peace